Time for another problem. This is a little bit different than the problems that we've seen before. Uh, so you can see here that um, I've labeled the overall vector here as v. But now in this problem, I'm not going to tell you what the overall vector is. Instead, I'm asking you what the uh, magnitude of the overall vector is. I'm asking you for the magnitude of the overall vector. Um, and I'm telling you that the x component has a magnitude of 5. So here's the direction of the overall vector. Its x component has a magnitude of 5. And your job is to figure out the magnitude of the overall vector. Well, please pause the video and give that a shot. If you have trouble, remember to try to use the same notation and approach that we've been using on previous problems. Of course, not the exact same approach, because this is a little bit different from the previous problems, but the same general notation and general approach. Give that a shot. Well, first of all, I'm going to put an asterisk here to show that this is the information I was given and that this is the angle that I'm focusing on. Uh, we might as well complete the right triangle here by drawing the y component, which is pointing up, of course, because the overall vector is pointing to the right and up. OK. Um, so uh, what are we trying to do here? Well, of course, we're trying to use this side to find this side. Uh, how is this problem similar to the problems that we've done before, and how is it different? Uh, well, in the previous problems, I've been giving you the overall vector and asking you for the components. And here I gave you one of the components and asked you for the overall vector. Well, they, those are pretty similar problems because in both cases, I'm giving you one side and one angle. Remember that that's one of the classic trigonometry problems. One of the classic trigonometry problems is where you're given one side and one angle. Usually in physics, you're given the hypotenuse and an angle. But this was a little unusual because I gave you a length and an angle. But we should be able to solve this pretty much the same way, using the trig functions. We just have to decide which trig function is appropriate. Ah, well, one thing we need to do is label the hypotenuse opposite and adjacent sides. Always a good idea to do that. Now, which trig function should we use? Well, it should be pretty apparent that we're going to use something that refers to the adjacent side, because that's what we would know a number about. We know a number about the adjacent side. So we know we're going to want to use a trig function that deals with the adjacent side. And we also need to use a function that deals with the hypotenuse, because that's what the question was about. What would be the point of focusing on the opposite side? We don't know any numbers for the opposite side, and um, the question is about the opposite side. So it would be pointless to focus on the opposite side. We should focus on the adjacent side, as indicating by this asterisk, because that's what we know a number about. And we could f focus on the hypotenuse, because that's what the question mark indicates the question was about. Well, which is the trig function that deals with the hypotenuse and the adjacent side? That would be cosine, wouldn't it? So we're going to have to use the cosine here. We can say that the cosine of our angle equals the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. Cosine of 20 equals the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. Now we know we want to get rid of the fraction by cross multiplying. Well, 1 times the adjacent side is the adjacent side. 1 times adjacent is just the length of the adjacent side. And multiplying diagonally in the other direction, we get the length of the hypotenuse times the cosine of 20. Now we can plug in. Or maybe I can stop right here. Uh, now, in, in most of the previous problems, uh, we've been skipping this step and going straight to this step. We've started getting into the habit of skipping this step and going straight to here. And that's perfectly OK if you wanted to go straight to here. Um, however, this problem was making me feel a little bit uncomfortable because it was a little bit unusual. It's a little bit outside my comfort zone. It's a little bit different from the previous problems. Well, anytime I get a little bit outside my comfort zone, uh, the way I deal with that is going back to Sokotoa and going back to the original definitions. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. I recommend that's probably what you should do, too. Anytime the problem feels a little weird or a little different, um, don't skip any steps. Instead of going straight to here, if you're at, at all uncomfortable, start with a general definition and then break it down. On the other hand, if you're not feeling uncomfortable and if you have high confidence, well, then it's perfectly okay to go straight to this step. Uh, but when in doubt, you can always go back to good old Sokotoa. 
cosine is adjacent to over hypotenuse, and then we can cross multiply to get to this point. Now, our adjacent side is 5. That's the number we were given. Uh, the hypotenuse here is V. We don't know that. We don't know what V is. Remember that it doesn't really matter whether you put a dot on top of V or not, because it represents the overall vector. Well, there's no such thing as a signed overall vector, so we don't really need to do, um, a, a separate dot symbol. You can put a dot on here if you like, or just leave it the way it is. So here's our next step. Phi equals V times cosine theta. Uh, now what? The algebra here is a little bit different than previously. Well, keep your, your, uh, your eye on our goal. We're trying to solve for V. That means we've got to get V by itself. We've got to get V by itself in this equation. Well, that means we've got to get rid of this cosine 20 on the right-hand side. How can we do that? Well, how is the cosine 20 attached to the V? How is the cosine 20 attached to the V? You can see it's attached by multiplication, right? This is V times cosine 20. Well, we have to do the opposite. What's the opposite of multiplication? Division. That allows us to cancel the cosine 20. Of course, if we divide by cosine 20 on the right, we're really obligated to divide by cosine 20 on the left. That's the way algebra works. Well, on one side, we're left with just v. On the other hand, uh, we have 5 divided by cosine 20. And now we can get out our calculator. You can do this in just one step. You don't have to figure out cosine 20 first and then divide. You can just do 5 divided by cosine 20 in one step on your scientific calculator. Remember that it is good to start trying to learn how to do things in one step on your calculator. Uh, on difficult problems, it, it can really save you from a lot of confusion to do things in one step rather than breaking them down into a million little steps. All right, so 5 divided by cosine 20. When I did that on my scientific calculator, it looks like I got approximately 5.3. V equals approximately 5.3. I'm not going to put a sign on this, because remember this represents the overall vector. There's no such thing as a signed overall vector. And because it's the overall vector, it doesn't really matter whether you put a dot on here or not. Uh, we don't need to uh, have a separate dot symbol here because uh, for magnitudes, because there is no such thing as a sign to overall vector. You just say this is 5.3 in length. Of course, if this was really a velocity, it would be 5.3 maybe meters per second. Uh, a little algebra point here. Remember um, that at one point we had this equation. At one point we had this equation, 5 equals v times cosine 20. Uh, it occurs to me that there might have been some people here who were tempted to take an inverse cosine. If there's anyone out there who was tempted to do that, uh, let me try to dissuade you. Uh, remember we were trying to get the v by itself. We're trying to get the v by itself, so we need to detach this cosine 20 term. Well, notice how is the cosine 20 term attached to the v? It's attached by multiplication, right? So the opposite of that is division. It wouldn't really do you any good to take the inverse cosine of this side. That would give you a humongous mess. Uh, that would make this If you try to take the inverse cosine of the whole right-hand side, you get uh, a weird mess that there's no good way to simplify. There's no good way to simplify this. Um, so that won't do us any good. We don't just want to get rid of this cosine, after all. We want to get rid of the cosine 20. So remember that this, this would not be a useful approach. The cosine is attached to v by multiplication. So we just get rid of it by dividing. I hope that algebra was not too confusing for you. Well, remember that what we're doing in this example is a slightly different type of problem. Um, what we have been doing is we've been doing a lot of problems where you were given the hypotenuse and you had to break that down into the components. Uh, and that's what you're usually going to see in physics. But every once in a while, you'll just be given a component and an angle. And then you have to figure out the overall vector. So it's good to know how to do that as well. So this is not um, at nearly as common a type of problem. But occasionally, you'll be given the component and you have to figure out the overall vector. Well, you should be able to do it either way because both ways you're given one side and one angle. Right? If you're given the hypotenuse and an angle, that's a side and an angle, and then you can break that into components. 
Um, but if you're given one of the components and an angle, that's again a side and an angle. So again, you should be able to figure out uh, the overall vector. By the way, if we wanted to, we could also have figured out the y component here. I just didn't ask you about that. But if we wanted to, we could have figured out the y component. And as usual in trigonometry, the way I solved this is not the only way it could be solved. There's a bunch of ways you could solve this problem. I'm just trying to show you the way that I, I think is best for a beginning student. And also the way that I think is the most conventional and usual way that these problems are done. One point I want to make again is that we've been getting into the habit of jumping to this equation and skipping this equation. But if the problem is giving you any difficulty, go back to the first principles and soak a toe and start with cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse and then cross multiply. 